Hey there, footy fans. Time to have a little bit more footy fun with Footy Finn. And look, uh, it is one week now until the Rugby World Cup kicks off in France. And that will kick off with a blockbuster clash between uh, France and New Zealand. Um, so listen, it's very exciting, although not necessarily if you're a Wallaby supporter, uh, nothing to get too excited about. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it is very exciting. Now look, I just want to run over a couple of things, a few happenings over the past week or two in the lead up. There have been plenty of warm up games and some um, very interesting results out of some of those last weekend. So look, just wanted to quickly run over that and, um, and think about how things are shaping up for a number of teams. Um, so first, first of all, um, the Wallabies faced France in Paris last Sunday, French time, um, as a warm-up. And look, France are one of the hot favourites for this World Cup to take out the title. I have my doubts as to whether they can get through the quarters, semis and the final. Uh, but be that as it may, they're still one of the hot favourites. So no surprise that France beat the Wallabies in Paris. Uh, but they didn't just beat them, they gave them a bit of a shellacking. I think it was 41-17, so a good 24 points. You know, the Wallabies would have needed to score three more converted tries and a penalty or drop goal um, to, to, to win that. Um, so look, France are looking very good. They have had um, a couple of key injuries though, particularly to a fella called Entomac, whose father also played for France. He plays at 5'8 or inside centre, so that is a big loss. Uh, but he's, they've got back up in depth there, unlike the Wallabies, by the way. Um, so anyway, that was that. Now listen, um, at Twickenham uh, last Saturday, England played Fiji, and Fiji scored a historic first ever win over England. And they did it at Twickenham in London, which is very impressive. I have to say, England are very shaky at the moment, like the Wallabies. It looks like the game has not been managed well there. Um, uh, the grassroots and development pathways have not been sort of nurtured and put in place and maintained. Um, it's very sad, but um, at this stage, um, English and Australian rugby fans can uh, commiserate with each other. Um, and um, neither nation is really expected to make the semi-finals at this stage. Uh, but then on, uh, on the same weekend, Ireland, again, are one of the hot favourites for the tournament. They have actually never made the semi-finals of the Rugby World Cup, so they would need to do it for the first time. They've got a very tough pool, including South Africa and Scotland. Ireland were given a bit of a scare by Samoa last weekend, but they survived that. Sadly, their veteran warhorse uh, prop, uh, Kean Healy, is out injured, but otherwise they've got a very strong squad. Um, but a big talking point last weekend was when the Springboks pl uh, played the All Blacks in a warm-up game at Twickenham in London. Now, just to backtrack a little bit, I did a video earlier um, in probably late July while the Rugby Championship was on. The New, uh, the New Zealand had quite comfortably beaten the Springboks in New Zealand there on the back of a strong first 20 minutes. But I did say at the time, I don't want to say I told you so, but go back and have a look. I said uh, New Zealand and their fans shouldn't get too carried away at that stage. And in fact, that seems to be the case the Springboks absolutely monstered New Zealand at Twickenham um, and beat them 35-7. Uh, New Zealand just scored one late consolation try um, that was really just an individual effort by the scrum half. Um, so they were absolutely outplayed, five tries to one. And uh, look, New Zealand did sustain a couple of yellow cards and... Um, Second row, Scott Barrett got two and got a red. Um, and it's not the, he's the first All Black ever to get two red cards, I believe. Um, so Kiwi fans are using that as a bit of an excuse, but look, they were absolutely outplayed. So that really kind of sets the cat amongst the pigeons in a way. Um, so really the big four in terms of um, teams people expect can win this World Cup, uh, France, Ireland, 
uh, from Europe and from the Southern Hemisphere, New Zealand, South Africa. Um, so that's how things stand at the moment. So the tournament opens uh, in a week on the 9th of September with a blockbuster clash between France mm. and New Zealand. Um, that's a much anticipated um, game. Can't wait for that. <clears throat> the Wallabies' first match, they, they're lucky. They've got a pretty easy pool. Their first match is against Georgia. Um, then they have Portugal, I think, to warm up before facing Fiji and Wales. Um, anyway, that's it for my little summary at the moment. Bring on the Rugby World Cup. Can't wait. Um, and until next time, uh, catch you in the middle of a rolling mall. See ya.